Ms. Pac-Man. One of the most popular arcade video games of all time from the Golden Age. Did you know that she was created due to the majority of Pac-Man players being women? Midway even stated that this was their way of saying thank you to all the women that played and enjoyed Pac-Man. Without a doubt, she is probably the best prostitute of all time, because for only 25 cents, she will swallow balls until she dies. Over the past decade, arcades and pinball machines have been on the rise again when it comes to putting them into your residential home. With that being said, not all of us have the real estate for a slew of machines or multiple different cabinets for arcade machines. So therefore, the new thing to do is to install a 60-in-1 kit inside your arcade machine or even a 250 plus. But the most common is a 16 in 1. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. I want to preface this video for those that are thinking of actually just taking all the stuff out of your Miss Pac Man machine or your arcade machine, the boards and everything, and tossing them out the window. Do not do that. There are many of other people out there in the world that would love to have these boards. So if you actually feel like you're going to transition to a 16 in 1 and you want to get rid of your board, at least put it up on eBay for someone else to take that board and bring their original machine to life. For the purists out there, don't be hating on me. I'm giving those information that would like to convert their machines to 60 in 1 and still give those that would love the original boards a chance to have them. So with that being said, let's get started. Power supply is going to be going there and my board's going to be going on the side. So now here I have a regular PC ATX power supply that you can get from any kind of retail outlet or take one out of, even out of your old computer that you don't use anymore. It's not going to need a large amount of power supply even though this is a 600 watt and it's pretty good decent you know for gaming here I have rubber grommets that I'm going to be basically using as spacers so the board is not basically being mounted directly to the board of the cabinet so here we have the power supply and here we have the PCB the 16 in 1 board this is a JAMA board to Pac-Man cabinet so before JAMA became the standardization for all arcade machines these the Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man machines had a different type of connection same amount of pins and everything but they were not in the same location so this board is going to allow me to connect without having to adjust any of the wires. Now as you can see on this current board, my board connections 5, 12, and ground bolts are completely removed from the harness. That was not me. I did not do that. This is the way the machine was when I got it. So the thing is, it's not going to matter that I don't have the 512 bolts as well as the ground hooked up because I'm not going to be utilizing it. I'm getting all my power and everything from this power supply here. So. I'm going to be hooking up the original JAMA harness to the converter and that converter is basically going to be moving the connections to the appropriate pins of a regular standard JAMA harness to the 60 and 1. And then all I have to do is connect the 5 and 12 volts from this ATX power supply to the converter board. And there you go. You've got power, you've got the 60 and 1, you've got the JAMA harness hooked up ready to go. So now I have to connect power to the power supply. The power supply is still going to need 120 volts from like an original outlet. It's not going to be getting any kind of voltage anywhere else unless I plug it into a wall. So I'm going to be actually taking the power supply cable, clipping off the end like here, showing the wires and I'm going to connect these to the same power that goes to the monitor because the monitor is still getting the AC voltage. So there we go. I've now got the power supply connected to the boards and then the power supply is being powered all the way over here to the monitor chassis that is inside the arcade machine. These basically just tie into the line and I've got them right there, wire nuts connected all of them there. And then it connects to the wall so now whenever I power on the machine it powers on the board. Here we go. We've got a green light. Our key power's on as well. Here's the thing with this 60 in one board, guys. It takes 60 seconds for this thing to completely initialize and boot up, which I don't agree with. I, I don't understand why this thing takes 60 seconds to boot up, but it does. But once the 60 seconds has passed, 
then you get loaded into the 16-in-1 screen and you're good to go. Now also, I want to say that you are going to need to adjust your monitor, okay? The monitor is not just going to work directly with no issues at all hooking it up to the board. Now as you can see with this machine, I've got previous burn-in from years and years of it playing Ms. Pac-Man. So that is another issue that you can either swap out and get you a nice LCD monitor in there or LED, whatever you want to do. We're going to see what this customer wants to do after I show him the amount of burn-in that is on this screen from playing Ms. Pac-Man for the past, you know, 20 years plus. So here's the dip switches that are on the board. There's only four of them and you want to go into test mode for sure to make any kind of setting changes that you want to do but that's also where you're going to be changing how your monitor is getting the video signal and that's pretty much it guys i mean just watch the video you can mute me so you don't have to hear me talk through it again but the video pretty much tells you and shows you how you're going to be hooking up the boards where you need to connect the power to if you actually just want to connect the power to that power supply without having to splice the wires you can get you a, an extension cord and run it into the back of the cabinet to power that power supply if you want to the reason why I've done it the way I do it is because now it's just a one button push a one button powers on the arcade powers on the boards and you're good to go whereas connecting it another way will possibly require you to have to plug in two things or turn two things on that's gonna wrap it up for this video guys thanks for watching